Good Sunday afternoon to you. Roger Hill of Weathering Heights, Velco Weather Hazards forecaster. We're looking at the big picture right now. You can see what is Teddy working in off the uh, western Atlantic. Looks like it's going to spare a Bermuda with a little bit of a side swipe and uh, cut a little bit to the left as there is an upper level system that will be developing and this will pull it just a little bit to the left. But aim, it looks like Teddy, into our um, Canadian Maritimes region, uh, really arriving somewhere around eastern Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island, and then continuing on a track, taking it off Labrador, potentially even keeping it as a Category 1 hurricane well into the North Atlantic. And we're talking cold waters at this point. Several other systems to watch, Tropical Depression Wilfred. We also have the leftovers of Paulette, which looks like it wants to head toward the African coast and then take a track that'll take it back out off of Africa. That would be very interesting. We'll see how this works out. Otherwise, right now we're not seeing anything uh, local and certainly not affecting the eastern seaboard. We do have, uh, uh, right now this is, of course, Beta which uh, formed uh, in the southern and southwestern Gulf of Mexico, taking a track that is going to be uh, plaguing the Gulf Coast states yet once again, producing a major amount of rainfall. And it's uh, these areas that are getting all the rainfall. Now, don't expect uh, moisture from Beta to get up in our neck of the woods and relieve our drought. Instead, we have these kind of uh, more or less a, kind of a zonal flow, but we are seeing some troughs and ridges a trough of lower pressure across western parts of Canada, a ridge across uh, the Great Lakes. This is what's uh, going to be moving in and helping to build this surface area of higher pressure. Big bubble, no trouble. In fact, it's a anticyclone that is very, very strong, and uh, it's blocking all weather systems north, south, east, and west in our neck of the woods. First thing here, we're going to take a look at moisture, and of course we have an absence with uh, negative P watts uh, around 1 to 2 standard deviation. Nothing unusual, it's just that we're seeing this a lot of the time. Of course, this is Teddy, and you can watch the uh, course of this as Teddy is going to be taking a track uh, toward Nova Scotia. There's Bermuda. It's getting close to Bermuda. kind of works its way around it, thanks to an upper-level low. Then it gets pulled back a little bit to the west and then takes a track that'll take it into Nova Scotia. And then once it gets into the Canadian Maritimes, it's off like a rocket to the north and east. Looking at the uh, European incrementals here, uh, we can see how basically Teddy is going to stay out of our hair off to the east of us. But you might, might note here, there's a little tiny bit of precipitation that's forecast for Wednesday that's going to make it into Vermont. And it does look like we could see a couple passing rain showers or sprinkles. This looks like it moves in right there. Again, just a minor lifting mechanism. No, this is not going to relieve a drought. A little bit of a breezy condition on the backside of the leftovers of, uh, of Teddy. And then it of course, it pushes out very, very quickly. And I thought I'd show you the uh, temperature regime here. So this is our colder anomaly of colder below normal temperatures. You can see this is zero. This is neutral. So white is neutral. This is above normal in temperature, below normal in temperature. And that's what we have going right now with that dome of higher pressure originating way up in the, uh, uh, really the Arctic is where it came from. Now that uh, begins to modify and push on out of the region. We start to see a little bit of a warming trend. This is valid next Wednesday, the 23rd. And then we get a little bit of heating. It's going to be taking place along the northern tier of the United States as everything settles further off to the south. That's kind of par for the course. And it looks like we're looking at a warm up here. And that's where temperatures could even make a run toward 80 degrees in some locations. This is above normal temperatures that will be working into the northeast United States. Uh, so moderation in temperature, also a little bit of added moisture as well. And uh, once again, it looks like the Canadian Maritimes are going to be under the gun for temperatures that will be running a good 10 degrees above normal. What about beyond that period? Well, we start to see a little bit of a cool down in the upper Midwest. The West Coast heats up again, more than likely wildfires once again. This uh, anomalous uh, warm spell pushes off the uh, Labrador coast above normal temperatures for them. And then we get cool again with a little bit of a roller coaster ride. And that kind of establishes itself across the upper Midwest, southern parts of Canada, right into a good eastern half of the United States. And that's valid going into the 4th of October. And the GFS and Canadian Ensemble looks like this. Of course, not a lot to see. This is three hourly QPF and the total amounts of uh, quantitative precipitation forecast you can see over the next few days. Over the weekend, maybe we finally get something and some in advertisement here of uh, higher amounts of precip by the, around the 27th, 28th. 
Quick look at precipitation, almost dry coast to coast. California a little bit better in the Pacific Northwest, good for Washington and Oregon, especially west of the Cascades. And then, of course, we have the moisture flow coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico with uh, Beta. And then this is Teddy. This is temperature anomaly uh, at 2 meters, of course. And you can see above normal temperatures off to the west, colder than normal along the eastern seaboard, also including uh, Greenland, parts of the Canadian archipelago. Still pretty warm, though, in the western parts of the Arctic back into Siberia. So as the colder anomalous air begins to uh, get pushed on out, we can see as temperatures overall have a warming trend here, where overnight lows will be back more around the 50-degree mark and daytime highs going back into the 70s, again for the Canadian and GFS ensemble. Looking at the weighted temperatures of the meteorological output statistics or MOS, these are high temperatures only the next five days, above normal across a good portion of the uh, interior west, more neutral now along the coast, and then we're seeing that sort of kind of squirt into uh, the northeast United States for more or less a westerly flow. And this is three days later, and you can see that that warming trend here running about three to six degrees above normal for this time of year. This is about uh, three to seven days out. In the tropics, we'll start out with Beta since it's closest to land, heading toward uh, New Orleans, uh, that general area, sort of eastern Texas. We also have a potential tropical formation, only 10% chance right now off the eastern seaboard of uh, really off the east coast of Florida. This is Teddy, a pretty powerful hurricane right now. Uh, still, as of uh, this morning, 105 miles per hour sustained. And uh, then we have one other situation we'll be watching, about a 60% chance of cyclone formation here. And then we also have Wilfred. This is uh, down in the uh, subtropical Atlantic. No threat to land for a long time to come. And quite a few disturbances still coming off of Africa. Five-day graphical tropical outlook here. This is the 60% chance of a cyclone here. And Wilfred, Teddy, and Beta. And one last thing to show you here. This is our big area of higher pressure situated over in Vermont and northern New England. That's going to get pushed off, and then we start to see the makings of Teddy get a little bit close there, and that's what's heading toward Nova Scotia. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights, thanks for watching.